for the, what do you call it? Yeah. For the rhyme in it, the theme and dream. Uh, the dream we learn also is vision. Huh? Uh, if the vision will work, we will have to do it together. And way at the beginning of this group, um, I shared a little on relationship. And I, um, uh, if any team will work, whether any team, whether it's marriage, in the church, in wherever, there is, um, uh, you have a team, you're mobilizing people to do things together. Um, relationship is important. And uh, I am sure that all of us will agree with that. And I have my, my personal version to that is that the devil was not interested in um, attacking Adam and Eve as such. He was interested in destroying man's relationship with his creator. Um, and I beg to propose that whatever problem we can cite in the world, the, the root of it is relationship. When we come to talk about racism, um, when we think of churches that split, people that walk away from churches, people who we feel were faithful to us. And then the most classic example our couples, I was thinking this afternoon over dinner that um, I have know couples who threatened that they will kill themselves if they don't marry each other. Um, they, they threaten that they will kill themselves and they get married and not long after somebody has to go rescue them from killing each other because the relationship began to deteriorate. Um, I feel uh, commentators, Bible scholars, when they teach on the Lord's Prayer, you can't help but um, make a commentary of what Jesus said. This is how you pray. Our Father. Um, and that is pregnated, those, that phrase, our Father impregnated with the dynamism of relationship that to God, our vertical and horizontal dynamism. And so I feel that the people um, relate at, uh, I copied this from a dear friend, Dave Tomlinson, many moons ago, way back in the eighties, taught this that uh, we, we relate at three levels, the casual level, which is very prevalent in the church, how you do, uh, God bless you, at the superficial level, how are you doing, my brother, good, how are you, good, and then the intimate level, where we, we take it to the, to the highest level of being connected, that leads us into friendship and fellowship <clears throat> that brings on, excuse me, the whole dynamism of care um, and everything else that go with, with um, strong relationship. And my prayer um, is that God, those of us who take time week after week for these months, that God would bring us to the place where we will be able, our relationship will become stronger and stronger. Um, and from the time you talk about team and talk about relationship, you inevitably talk about openness, you talk about honesty, you talk about transparency, um, respect, acceptance of each other uh, without any hindrances, um, racial, social, ecclesiastical, whatever it is. Um, so I like to move on. Many leaders in the church today 
do not appreciate the truth and importance of team ministry. Uh, my experience has been many people, they, they, they can talk team, they can recite team, they can preach team. But if you ask them, they are not team players. They are great loners. They are a one-man band. Um, what they call this guy now in the Western movies, Lone Ranger. The, the now generation, Generation X, Generation Z, do not know about Lone Ranger. Um, Brother Cooper used to give an illustration, James Cooper, the late James Cooper, that that Lone Ranger and Tanto, his um, sidekick, were confronted by all these Indians. And Lone Ranger turned to Tanto and said, what do we do? And Tanto said, who we? Who we? Um, that was uh, a story that Brother Cooper always tells. Team ministry is two or more leaders or people working together to accomplish a single or a particular task. It is a group of men and women of God who are knit together in spirit and purpose for God's kingdom. Unfortunately, many leaders have never cooperated with others in a team effort. Um, I've known many pastors are, are not team players. Um, they, they're just loners. They, they make all the decisions and run with it. I always remember one gentleman who has blessed the work in Guyana, the fellowship, by supporting um, many of our workers for many years, since 1971 until maybe in the 90s, uh, he said to me, Lionel, I, I don't need a board. I don't need a team. I don't need people to be telling me when God leads me and tells me what to do something. I don't need anybody else's counsel. Um, so th that was the way he operated. For many years, the church has been dominated by one man bands. That is one person carrying all the responsibility and doing all the work himself. And that still goes on. Um, God never intended for one man to carry all the responsibility or pressure for a local church or ministry. And I thought of what, what Jethro said to Moses when he saw Moses from morning till evening. Um, why sit you, chapter 18 of the book of Exodus and verse 14, why sit you yourself alone and all the people stand by you from morning until evening? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, because the people come unto me to inquire of God. Um, and then verse 18 says, Jethro replied, you will wear away both you and this people that is with you, for this thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to perform it thyself alone. And some of us have been around long enough to um, have seen many good men have suffered and became casualties because they burn out. Now they, the biggest thing is they become mentally affected. Many men have collapsed physically, mentally, morally, or emotionally under such a load. For this practical reason, as well as moral, doctrinal, and spiritual reasons, God has ordained ministry to work in teams. It's amazing, I thought um, that Jesus, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, um, chapter 2 or chapter 3, if I could find it. Um, 
that Jesus called his disciples to be with him. I love that. Um, uh, what is it? Okay. 314. 314. Thank you. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him. Um, my personal testimony to uh, if I will confess, my daughter sometimes asks me, Dad, who are your friends? Who are your friends? And it's very sad. I have friends. I have some pastor friends, but they are always busy. They can only talk about church and prophecy and conference and those kinds of things. Um, but the, the statistics say that pastors are people who don't have friends. They don't have friends. They don't have friends in the church because they don't want to bring themselves to the people's level or with their leaders per se. And if you have friends, it's at a certain level. Um, team ministry is a scriptural pattern. We see the Godhead. I don't have time. And I mentioned Dr Jethro's counsel. The New Testament and I tried to list it. I only, I stopped because I could not type. When we study the New Testament, it's pregnated with example upon example of teams working together. We, we preach a lot of things from the New Testament. Um, and sometimes we miss out the dynamism uh, of team. Jesus and his disciples, Peter and John, on the day of Pentecost, we glorify Peter, but the Bible says that um, the 11 stood with Peter, or Peter was with the 11. Um, I had a friend who joked, I don't want you, my brother. You know that sometimes people tell you, Lionel, I am behind you. Well, my friend responded to that and said, I don't want people, I don't want you to be behind me. My friends must be beside me. The only person who must be behind me is the devil. So if you're going to be with me, if you're going to be my friend and be in relationship with me, you have to be with me. Um, uh, maybe I'll stop there for this evening. Maybe the next time we'll talk about the purpose and advantage of team ministry. Amen. Thank you. You've gone back to mute. Wesley. <laughs> Who is that? Wesley. Yeah, John, you put up your hand. I think I saw your hand. Oh. I, I, I saw Wesley raise his hand. So I just oh, my... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> Wesley. <laughs> sorry, Wesley. Sorry, Wesley. Okay. I, I miss you. Sorry. Go on, go on. Yes, I, I want to make a, um, Bishop John Gomez made a very a profound statement last week dealing with the issue of keeping ranks and referring to what you share in teamwork. There was a respect for everybody's gifting <clears throat> among the tribes, you know, and who they really were, what God has placed in their lives. Um, there was... Uh, of course, David would have been king, but all the tribes came together with a loyal heart and with oneness. And he respected, you know, um, there was a respect everybody, like we talk about the sons of his car, they were the intelligence guys. They were men who were good stone throwers. They were men who were, could operate in the plain. They were men who could operate in the valley, who could have operated on the mountaintop and all these things. But they put hands and heart together to build a powerful army. Right, Israel became a powerful army because there was that great respect. They, they, they kept ranks together, but there was that great respect. At the end of it, the scripture closed, that, board, that, that chapter closed to say that there was joy in Israel. And if you can understand, when we can love and respect each other, support each other, stand very strong with each other, this nation is groaning, is travailing for such a happening to take place in the body of Christ. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Wesley. Anybody else? Anybody else? You have a thought? Um, uh, amen. 
Uh, thank, thank you, but thank you, Heinel. Um, I, that was a very beautiful presentation, and it is making out very clearly we need we need one another, and we will be at our best, and we we need one another to bring out the best in each of us. The, the word does say iron sharpened iron. Uh, just like how a man's friends would sharpen his countenance. And team ministry is vital, as you have so beautifully portrayed, to help us accomplish God's will in the earth, but also to help us achieve the greatest sign God says will identify us as his disciples. By this shall all men know you are my disciples because you have love one for another. And we cannot operate in team without Christian love. I want to thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, that's the heart of God. Amen. I think we are embarked upon that. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Thank you very much. I, I I would like us to um, start um, talking application. How how do we apply what we we heard last week, what we 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 heard tonight, and what we've been hearing to the project and the vision and what we are attempting to do in Guyana? Um, unless we do that, then it's theory. So uh, while we are getting these. Um, nuggets and, and, and beautiful presentation, we have to wrap our heads around and our hands to make this very practical and applicable to the, the common vision we, and project we are attempting to do in terms of um, racism and whatever else you want to do in Guyana. Yeah, well, I feel I feel that we we have first of all we have been gathering like this. We have been praying, um, praying. Um, we have the practical things. Number three, we have been sharing like we have been doing from the word, um, and uh, been involved in discussions, but I feel that, um, like you rightly said, tonight I thought it would be good maybe for us to go back and check our vision when we talk about uh, maybe uh, spiritual awakening. What, what do we mean? Can we 